In this video, we're going to talk about how precipitation forms. And there are going to be two ways that we can have precipitation. It could either be through the Bergeron process or from the collision coalescence process. And we're going to go into each of these in more detail. One of the first things that we need to happen to form precipitation is that a cloud, which is full of that condensed water vapor, is going to need to be cooled. But it doesn't need to just be cooled, it needs to be super cooled. For this, we're going to allow all of those really tiny cloud droplets, those ice crystals, as it gets colder and colder, they're going to grow in size as they collect more and more water vapor along their surface. And as they're growing, they're going to start forming large snowflakes. And eventually those snowflakes are going to be large enough that they're going to fall from the cloud and start moving towards the ground. Most of the time, though, this snow is going to melt. It's going to form rain before it ever gets down to the surface. But we see that all forms of precipitation start off as snow. Even here in Florida, it starts off as snow. It just melts into liquid water very quickly, way before it ever reaches the surface. One thing I want to point out, though, is how tiny all of these particles are. When we think about clouds, I think about going past in an airplane, these huge masses of condensed air. But when we're looking at the condensation nuclei, those solid particles that water vapor can condense onto, these are incredibly microscopic. Here, this long rope looking thing is the average human hair and how thick it is. So look how tiny these condensation nuclei are in comparison to our hair. But we're going to see that the cloud droplets and the precipitation that forms are going to be significantly larger. This is because we're going to have millions of cloud droplets forming together around these condensation nuclei before they ever grow in size to be the typical raindrop, shown here at the very bottom of this image. This image shows the Bergeron process. There are some cloud droplets that are in the air next to much smaller water vapor molecules. Some of this water vapor is going to attach to the ice crystal and it's going to start forming a new snow crystal. But over time, that snow crystal is going to grow larger and larger as the cloud droplets shrink and more of the water vapor combines with the snow crystal. It's just going to grow larger and larger in size until eventually it's heavy enough to fall from the cloud. When precipitation forms, we'll also see something that's called the collision coalescence process take place. And this generally happens in warm clouds. So instead of that water vapor freezing into snow, we're going to see that the, those tiny droplets of cloud vapor are going to combine into larger pieces. But generally when they get so large, as they're moving through the cloud, a lot of friction is going to change the shape and it's eventually going to break it down into smaller rain droplets again. So with this collision coalescence process, it's water vapor that's a liquid because it's in warm clouds that are combining together into large raindrops, and then because of physics are then broken down into smaller raindrops again. You might have noticed if you drive that the raindrops that fall on our windshield don't range a whole lot in size. We might have a smaller mist versus a larger raindrop in a major storm, but I've never had a raindrop the size of my car fall. The reason why we have raindrops that are mostly the same size are all due to this collision coalescence process. It's going to narrow down the size of raindrops as they fall out of the cloud. 